Hello everyone, this is Troy with Tynes, and in this video I want to show you how Tynes' new AI features help make Tynes even more accessible to really anyone in your organization, and how they help simplify the stories, the story development process, and the story architecture. What you see on the screen, we have a, a typical use case, a security alert ingest, where we're, we're receiving security alerts from multiple sources. This is multiple SIMs, multiple endpoint products, multiple cloud security products as examples. We immediately capture a Tynes record for auditing purposes and then split into three separate threads or three different threads depending on the use case or category of the security alert received. Uh, each thread then has its own create case where the descriptions are defined, the response tasks are defined, the uh, IOCs are extracted and listed there. But each one is unique per that thread and have to be defined per that thread in order to accommodate each type of alert, each type of source as well, we have to break out horizontally like, like so. And previously there was no way to be more dynamic necessarily or dynamic enough to accommodate all use cases. Uh, the problems here with this uh, really are the growing, in most cases, never ends. New, new detection rules are defined, the sprawling continues, the management of that becomes increasingly complex. Change control becomes completely, increasingly complex. And sometimes, depending on uh, one update, turns into updating five different locations, which just simply increase risk and change management. Uh, the Tynes new AI action can come in helpful here. And using the LLMs, we can uh, have AI define our descriptions and our response tasks and summarize our alerts from any different source that we decide to throw at it. And so what I'll do is throw down a Tynes AI action here. We'll connect it up, and I'm gonna go ahead and move our previous webhook and capture over and plug that in. Now let's look at the AI action here. What we have is a prompt, it may look familiar, uh, and in the options section, which are familiar to all Tynes actions, we are able to choose a model. So let's keep it as is, and what I will do is copy in a previously created prompt here, and we'll paste that in. So we're gonna ask the prompt to uh, summarize the alerts for us. This will be sent off uh, to AI at runtime uh, for evaluation and response. Um, what we're missing here though is some input data, and something we can do is familiar and similar across all times. Payloads like this is the payload builder. We're going to go into receive alerts.body. Now we're passing in the alert information that we receive. What I'll do is then remit the last couple of events and allow those to evaluate. Let's take a real quick peek at these events. And there we have it. Unauthorized activity alert case summary extracted per our instructions. We have potential concerns, observables, etc. Let's look at this other one, privileged account abuse. In this case, we were given recommended actions, details, descriptions, and so forth. So looking okay here so far. Uh, this becomes increasingly important, as I mentioned, when sources increase, rule definitions increase, and the, and the horizontal uh, sprawl makes management of stories very difficult. And so this is one use case where AI um, is increasingly becoming important and is very helpful in our story building. In this example, we've taken what, 25, 30 actions and moved it down to, to three to handle uh, any of our alerts. So that is the Times AI action. We have what we call the uh, automatic mode in the event transform action that previously existed. So to show that, I'll pull down the event transform uh, action and in the mode section, you see automatic here. In this prompt, we have an input, uh, we have guidance, and when we click on either of those, we're prompted with a, a similar menu for those inputs. Um, let's look at an example of where this can uh, be very helpful and come into play, which is in a lot of cases around data transformation. Um, taking what was previously um, could be uh, manual uh, difficult efforts and making it uh, very seamless. In this case, I'll start with a simple example. Uh, we're just going to group by and we are going to um, filter as well after that. So we have an array of employee data. We're going to pass that into an automatic transform mode. And the guidance I gave it here is to filter input array where user ID is greater than one and group the resulting array by manager. So let's just let that run. 
let's evaluate the events. And now you have the ability to uh, transform data in a very, very complex way using really nothing more than, than typical language. Um, let's look at our next example. I want to introduce some more complex ideas here and where this can be taken. Um, what we have is URL data, just an array of some URLs. And uh, what we're going to try and do is parse TLD. Previously, um, this was a multi-step process, a fairly straightforward process, but a multi-step process where uh, the, the uh, top-level domain values had to be either gathered each time as a comparison or stored uh, somewhere in a database in a times resource for evaluation against. But using the automatic transform, we have the ability to leverage uh, Python libraries now going forward with in this case, we're going to try and use the TLD extract library and extract the TLD results from our array of URLs and simply just return if the, it's a valid top-level domain. And all right, so the output is basic here, but it gives us a good idea of how it's functioning. So one final example. Uh, is uh, one of the more difficult processes in data, which would be parsing HTML or converting that. Uh, previously, extracting IDs, classes, without the use of, of some very large libraries like uh, Python's Beautiful Soup, uh, would be a very tedious uh, act. It would be very uh, time-consuming as well. So uh, in this example, we just have some HTML stripped down to a table. Um, but we are going to leverage the automatic transform mode and to convert this to an array of objects representing that table. Uh, we could be look different. We could extract by ID and class. We have all the power of beautiful soup at our fingertips here. And so given the prompt uh, explicitly defining beautiful soup for uh, input HTML table, asking it to parse that and return an array. Let's give that a run. And just to demonstrate here. Wait, we were able to move from this data structure, HTML data structure, to some nice uh, and manipulable uh, JSON data there. So uh, those are just a couple examples, I hope, to, to get you started in the AI journey here. It's, it can be very helpful if, if you're stuck in some data transformation actions, summarization, the list goes on and on. Um, if you have any questions, on the AI capabilities, um, feel free to reach out to your CSM. And also be sure to check out Tynes Explained as well. Just go to Tynes.com in the menu, click Tynes Explained, and type in AI in the search. Uh, you should have enough uh, information here to at least get you started, but definitely reach out to your CSM if you have any further questions. Thank you.